Good afternoon, building construction trade students. Hope everyone is doing well. Uh, we're going to give you a short video on electrical so you guys can review the video and answer some questions regarding the video information and then email the information back to me so you, I know you watched the video and understood it. Also, ask any questions, send us my email. Uh, let me refresh uh, your memory a little bit on some of the tools we'll be using. So we use alignment pliers, these are used to twist the wire and also cut the wire. Wire strippers, all you guys know this from working in class. Needle nose pliers, we haven't used this in class but it's important to use when you're working on electrical, it's an electrical tester. Gives you a beep, beep, beep when the circuit is on so you know it's safe to work on the circuit. So whenever working on the circuit, make sure you're safe. Know what the circuit breaker is that you're working on and always shut that one off. So prior to doing this video, I know this circuit breaker number nine. And then we'll turn that off before we touch the wires. But we'll go over here and show you what we did. Uh, <clears throat> the electrical panel is over here. The source of the electric comes from the electrical panel. It goes across the ceiling, kitchen ceiling over here. Here there's a little attic above. And then I brought it down this wall right here. You can see, see these wires right here. I don't really want to touch it right now because this is hot right now, but I'll shut it off and then we'll, I'll show you how to test it works. This is going to be a three-way switch. And then I had to open it up here, drill a hole, and then put the wire across the crawl space, out here towards the front door, so there's two different locations to turn the switch on from. And the reason they call it a three-way switch is because it has three positions. This position would be up, down, up, or up, down, up, over there. That's why I call it three-way. So I'll just uh, demonstrate the electrical tester here for you. It's turned on right now. And you can hear beep, beep, beep with the red noise. That means it's hot. Don't touch the wire, it's hot, it's not safe to touch. So, I know it's circuit breaker number nine. I'll go over here and turn it off. Now it's off. So we can turn the tester back on. It's dead. See, it's dead, so now we know it's safe to work on. Always know that there's no electricity before you stick your hand into the box. So we verified that it's uh, safe to work on. We'll pull the two different wires out to be working with. In this case, we have a 15 amp breaker, so we're using a 14-2 wire and also a 14-3 wire for your switch. So this is your source. All well, you guys remember your source, that's where the power comes from. So this is your hot wire, your neutral wire, and your ground wire. This is your three-way switch wire, three wires. There's two hot wires here. A red wire and a black wire are your hot. The white is a neutral, and again, the copper is your ground wire. So one of these will be a travel. It will travel electricity back and forth to two different switches. Okay, now that we have the box in place, I want to talk a little bit about running wires across the room and what involved in that process. You're going to need a uh, measuring tape, pencil, a level, and a stud finder. So as previously uh, I told you guys, we ran a wire across underneath the crawl space to the switch in front of the house because you want to be able to turn on the lights in the dining room and ceiling as soon as you walk in the door. So we have the switch box over here, right by the front door. And this is your three way wire coming across into the box. Now we got to add a 14 2 wire from this box to the fixture all the way up into the dining room ceiling, but it's not installed yet. So you guys gotta figure out how you're gonna do that with the minimal damage. So you wanna know where your studs are, so you just cut the sheetrock half on stud, so it's easier to patch the sheetrock when you go back to do that. So we're gonna have to add wire from here. So you can see I already put a little bit of wire here, because I drilled, previously drilled up through the double top plate across the floor joist, and there's another the wire right here. This is really just like a fish wire, so you can attach two wires. So what I'm gonna do, 
once I have the wire here, I'm going to, I'll show you in the next video of uh, taping two wires together, pulling the whole wire across. So you got to map out where this wire has to go. Because you don't have x-ray vision, sometimes you run into obstacles. So we're going across the ceiling here. We're going to go, I threw out the pencil line, already drilled this out right here. I drilled through the plate of the wall. The wire's going to come across here, I'm going to have to drill. And you can see I mapped it out with two pencil lines. And I have to cut channels in the street rock so I can drill between the studs. You want to get enough space so you can put your drill in there and you can drill a straight spot. So we're going to come across here, cut this channel out, go across, up the wall, across, up to the double pop, top plate up there, and across the ceiling to where the fixture box is going to be. I'm going to just demonstrate how you use the uh, stud finder. So a lot of older houses you can see there's nail pops, so it gives it away where the stud is. See this spot here? And that's a nail or a screw popping out the sheetrock, so you know that's where a stud is. So the stud finder gives you the edge, not the center of the stud. So you set it here, beep, go close, close. So that's the edge of the stud right there, where it beeps. And you know building codes approximately, the studs have to be 16 inches on center. So you use your tape measure, measure across, so you have marked the 16 inches right there already. So you know approximately, the stud should be around this area, give or take an inch or so. So let's go across, turn, turn the stud finder back on. We go across, you're gonna hear a beep. Beep, so that's the edge of the stud. And here's where I marked the center. So I know there's a stud here. So I know I'm gonna stop with my notch right here. Go up, across and up, and attach the wire to the fixture box in the ceiling where we want it. Okay, as you can see, we got the 14-2 wire. We fed it through the wall. It's gonna go from the switch box all the way up to the fixture. So you can see the holes are right there to the double top plate across the floor joist. It's going this direction. And I'm gonna show you what's gonna happen when you have a tight spot in the corner, what you have to do. Okay, so when you have a tight spot in the corner, a lot of times your wire won't fit around a 90 degree bend inside a, a two by four corner. So what you gotta do is take a shorter wire, it's called a fish wire, and you tape it to the end of the ear wire and then pull it through. So I'm gonna demonstrate that. So you pull this wire, you will wiggle it, and then it will come through. And now you're good to go, okay? That's how you do a corner. Welcome back, BCT. As you can see, we got the wires run, properly attached all the way across the wall and up to the ceiling. Uh, what we did here, we, we know we're gonna put a table in the floor. So we mapped out the table on the floor and put the locations where we wanted to put the lights. You can see here, we're using a plumb bob. You guys know this from Mr. O'Brien's class, it's really a carpentry tool, but it would transfer your mark from your floor to your ceiling. And it's just a string with a heavy weight and a point on the end of it. It's really a two-person job. And if any guys really want to be an electrician, I suggest you uh, invest in a laser level. It's a lot faster and a lot more accurate. Now we got the wires up, I'm going to show you a couple things. You can see that they're uh, stable to get a little demonstration on uh, how to stable the wire. You don't want to put it too tight and pinch the wire. So just really put it loosely around the wire, start it, done. Make sure it's got a little wiggle, that way it's not too tight, it's not pinching the wire. As you can see over here, you I had to drill a lot of notches. So before you sheetrock, you wanna put uh, nail plates over here to protect it so the, sheet, the sheetrock screw won't hit the wire and, and cause a lot of problems. So. It's the electrician's responsibility to protect the wire. So here's an example of uh, two sizes of the nail plates. And I'll just show you how I'm going to put one on. They have little spikes on the end and they cover your location. So like right here, you don't want a wire. You don't want to screw to sheetrock. So just put it right over. Tap it in. 
Now a sheetrock screw won't penetrate the wire and you're good to go. Right now the circuit breaker is off, so I'll talk a little bit about the three-way switch and how it works. You can tell it's a three-way switch because it has three terminals where the wires connect to, not including the ground. One, two, three. Okay? So on the like I talked about before, the circuit breaker is off, so we'll verify that with our tester. It's not beeping red, so you know it's off. So you know it turned off the correct circuit breaker. So even though you turn a circuit breaker off, always confirm with your tester that you have no electricity before touching the wires. So you see you have a black terminal, two bronze, and a green. The green is always for the ground. The black terminal is for your source wire coming in would be attached to the black terminal. And the two bronze wires are for your traveler wires from your three-way wires going from this switch to the other switch. And I always, I always wrap a piece of tape around here. So when, after you turn the circuit breaker on, you test everything. Just, and you, you don't want to accidentally touch the wires and get shocked. So I just do one little quick wrap. Like that, like that, okay? Now we're gonna turn the circuit breaker on and I'll show you if it works. The circuit breaker's back on and we'll verify with the tester. Tester's on, see the red beep, 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 beep. That means it has power to the switch. So now I'm gonna turn on, see the light. For a three-way switch to work properly, you gotta have three positions. So that's on, off. Now we'll go back to the other switch. Wired the same way. And you see the switch will go on from your different location. That's how you know it works. So you go up, down, and then another position off. And we're at the second switch of your three-way switch switches. So uh, here's an example of a switch, just like the other switch, but it's gonna be a different uh, wiring pattern here. You have two bronze screws. Those are for your two travelers, but the uh, black screw is for your 14-2 black wire that goes from the box to the fixture. So you gotta make sure you put that wire on the black wire on the black terminal or else it won't work correctly. So the 14-2 hot wire goes right here and two travelers go on either side of the switch. And again, the green is for your ground screw. Okay, now you guys will watch this video. I have five easy questions for you guys to answer and send them back to me. Here's my email address for you guys to send the questions, your answers to the questions back to me. J Bride, spelled B R Y D E, at mercertechschool.org. So here's a question. Question number one What two safety procedures are needed to be done before working on any electric? Hint Use one of these tools. Question number two. Why is it called a three-way switch? Question number three. What is the difference between 14-2 and 14-3 wire? Here's an example of two wires. Here's your 14-2 in my right hand. Here's a 14-3 in my left hand. What is the name of the... Question number four. What is the name of the pliers used in this video that's used to twist and cut wires? Here's, a, here's what we use. So what do you guys call this? What kind of pliers? And question number five. What is the name of the tool used to transfer the marks from the floor to the ceiling? Remember I told you it's this string with a weight and a point on the end of it and you transfer your mark from the floor this ceiling, but if you really want to be an electrician, use a laser level. So what's this tool called? Be safe, talk to you soon.